Video gamer Razer making its debut in Hong Kong later on today, having priced its IPO near the top of the range and seen shares jump in the gray market. Its retail trench was almost 300 times oversubscribed. Joining us now is co-founder and CEO Min Liang Tan. Min, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for Big having Big day me. for you, of course. You've always said Razer is for gamers and by gamers. Is it for investors too? I mean, given the demand that we've seen so far when it comes to the retail investors, what does this mean for the growth prospects for Razer in this part of the world? Well, the IPO was crazy. You know, it was significantly <laughs> oversubscribed by institutionals. Retail has been just through the roof. Um, I think, you know, we are the first uh, global tech brand to come list in Hong Kong and um, I'm excited. I'm optimistic. You're in a pretty good net cash position right now. Why, why decide to list in Hong Kong versus Singapore versus the NASDAQ or the U.S. where most of your main revenue comes from and where you actually started most of the company? Well, you know, given that we are the number one gamer brand in the U.S., Europe and in China, we thought Hong Kong was the perfect location to be right in between, you know, the U.S. and China to access capital from both sides of the market. And over and above, you know, having strategic investors like Mr. Lee Kashing uh, helped too. Uh, you know, Min, uh, I'm sure here in the U.S., though, uh, there's curiosity why you didn't look at the, or why you did, chose not to list in the U.S. on the NASDAQ or on the NYSE. Well, absolutely. As I've, as I've mentioned, you know, um, while we're big in the U.S., I think uh, not many people know that we, are pre we have a pretty large brand in China at the same time. In fact, I, actually, with uh, Double Eleven Day, you know, we broke records uh, on our categories also at the same time. We are still number one mm. on JD.com and Tmall, I think, with the recent, um, uh, you know, shopping day. Well, because of that, we thought it's a great opportunity to be in Hong Kong and to be the first global tech company to list in Hong Kong. And um, hopefully in the couple of months to come and, uh, you know, to get on the uh, Hong Kong Shenzhen Connect too. Right, so to highlight the Asia market as well, Min. Uh, I'm also curious about the smartphone that you're selling into the market. I know you make these accessories for desktop, laptop, but now you're coming out with this smartphone. What is it that you're going to be able to offer others with a smartphone that uh, Apple or Samsung or others can't? Well, straight up, we focus on the 2.2 billion gamers out there, and we've built this massive ecosystem of hardware, software, and services around the gamer. And um, moving into the mobile sector really allows us to extend that ecosystem. So, you know, we are very well known in the PC sector, we are no well known in the console sector, and now extending across to the mobile sector allows us to kind of address the gamer, the 2.2 billion gamers out there in multiple platforms. And we think this is a great opportunity for us to be able to do that. And uh, since the launch, the uh, Razer phone has done incredibly well. You know, hashtag Razer phone has trended on social media. You know, there's been so much excitement about the uh, Razer phone. The first reviews have been incredibly stellar. So, you know, for ourselves, we just focus on the gamer. It's done very well for us in the past couple of years, and uh, we hope to continue doing that. So it's more of a niche market, you think, that, you know, the edge that you're going to be able to bring. Is it more towards the gamers and not so much really looking at rivals like Apple, like, like Samsung in particular? Well, if you call the biggest... I mean, this biggest... is a completely different ballgame for you here. <laughs> well, if you call the biggest segment of um, entertainment, gaming, a, a niche, you know, it's a, it's a $100 billion industry. You know, 2.2 billion gamers out there. Um, our focus has always been on entertainment, on the gamer, and um, we built the Razer phone for all of that. You know, it's a gamer phone. It's not a, a gaming phone in the premise that we wanted it to be the ultimate entertainment device. Mm. And today, you know, most um, people use their uh, smartphones for entertainment. So it's great for movies, it's great for, for music, and of course, it's great for gaming. Uh, yes, that's something my teenage boys know very well. Uh, they have that habit on their smartphones, Min. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm curious, just related to this news that we had just a few moments ago about SoftBank investing, you know, $10 billion into Uber. I'm curious, Min, you know, why you decided to go into the public markets to raise money when it seems like out there in the private sector, uh, there's a lot of money rolling around, particularly from SoftBank. Why not just go to your investors again to raise this money? Well, I think, you know, that was one of the things we definitely considered and many of our uh, investors had actually um, offered to have us continue to be private. Um, in fact, one of our cornerstone investors was actually one of our early investors too. 
I think for ourselves, um, given our growth, I think we've got an incre uh, incredibly profitable uh, kind of core business. We're extending into new categories. We thought that this is as good a time as any, you know, for us to go into the public markets. Um, we're ready. We've been prepped up to be a public company for a while. And um, on top of that, it gives an opportunity, I think, for even our community, the gamer community, to own a part of Razer. And, um, you know, for gamers, by gamers, I think that's something we truly believe in. Yeah, you, you've lost money for the last two years. Uh, what's your estimated revenue growth, at least, for this year? And when do you think Razor can turn profitable again? Sure. So I can't comment on our future uh, kind of numbers. But what I can say is that our core business, if you look at our numbers, is incredibly profitable. And what we've done is that we've had a kind of standard playbook of sorts of investing in new categories, and every time a new category you know, turns around, becomes profitable, we move it into a profitable pile and rinse and repeat. So we've done that, I think, um, for gaming peripherals. We're doing that for our gaming laptops. We've moved into gaming mo uh, mobile uh, devices at the same time. But are you concerned really about scaling it. deviating too far away from your core competency, with it, which is... Head, handsets and, and you know, the, the, the hardware that we see that comes so, from So Razor. we're not a hardware company. We're not a software company or a, or a services company. We're all of that. So we have a, we've built this incredible ecosystem. We've got 40 million you know, users on our gaming platform. That makes us a, one of the biggest gaming platforms out there in the world. I mean, just on the internet side of things. Mm -hmm. Now, for ourselves, I think our focus has always been very, very clear. It's the gamer out there. It's the, it's the masses of the, the gamers. And that's just growing exponentially. And it's not just, it's not stopping at this point of time. You know, we've seen China come up. We are seeing new markets that we're incredibly excited about. Um, the opportunities uh, afforded to us um, in this entire ecosystem is something that uh, we see to be growing exponentially for the years to come. What do you see as the biggest risks, I guess, and opportunities in some of these new technologies? We talk about AI, we talk about VR, AR. Uh, what are the things that you could actually capture when it comes to some of these capabilities? Well, the beauty about technology and in recent times today is that um, a lot of the new technologies have been kind of promulgated by gaming. If you think about it, VR, it started with gaming, motion yeah. sensing, gaming, you know, all of that. You know, at Razer, we've got this uh, really interesting position to be ahead of the tastemakers. We're moving things along. And with the uh, brand that we have, we are the leading lifestyle brand for gamers everywhere in the world. Um, we've got a massive distribution platform. We're well poised to be able to roll out some of these technologies when they come about. Yeah. So that's one of the things that we think it's a great opportunity for ourselves at Razer, not just on a geographical level. So for example, China or um, you know, upcoming um, other markets like Southeast Asia or right. India or Indonesia for that, for that matter. But there's just so much more.